Yo, this is John from Noise Dosage Media, and this episode is brought to you by Begrudgingly Benny. Interested in putting something horrific and grotesque on your next piece of merch? Benny is tucked away in the fiery depths of COVID quarantine, blasting the filthiest of old school death metal and drawing hideous creatures that he is waiting for you to adopt. Go over to Instagram and follow at Begrudgingly Benny and contact him if you would like some really weird original art for your band or label. Super professional. Highly recommended. All right. So what's up? We got uh, Jonas from Bloodbath and Catatonia on Noise Dosage Media. This is one of my highlights. I am super happy this is happening. So um, I'm going to blast you with a few questions. You ready? Sure. Okay. Um, so with being, you know, the founding member to such massive projects, what are some of the top things you've learned along the way? Uh. Wow, that's uh, you know I would say it's a lot of stuff that we we had to pick up along the way because uh, uh, I think one thing is uh, that you have to be determined and you have to put in a lot of uh, hard work if you if you want to make it somehow. Um, right. So it's uh, it's not necessarily just about talent. I would say it's also about uh, you know. Uh, making sacrifices and, and be ready to do stuff that you maybe didn't dream about when you, when you were thinking you would be a rock star or something, you know, there's a lot of other mm-hmm. stuff coming along, uh, at the same time. So that's, uh, that's probably the stuff I would say. I've been told, you know, like half of the battle is just learning how to promote yourself. And that, that's totally true because like, I don't know, like, yeah, you could be a good musician, but, if you don't know how to promote yourself, where the hell are you going to take it? So, yeah, that's um, that's true as well. You know, you have to uh, to learn how to sell your your idea of, of music and find the, the people that are you know somehow connected to it or could be connected to it. So you you find a little fan base and and then you just try to go from there, basically. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, like what are some personality traits that you have that have been like essential to like battling through these projects? Um, what do you mean? Like, uh, so like you said, you're determined and all, but like, what, what are some other traits that you have? Um, I don't know. You just, uh, I think like we, for me, when it comes down to music, like a trait I have is like either either I am very motivated or I'm not motivated. And when I am, like I need to get shit done. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point, actually. Uh, I'm a little bit like that myself. Um, I think you should um, try to... Uh, Focus on being creative when you feel that you have a, a period where you can be creative. And if you feel like shit and not doing stuff like that, you, you shouldn't try to force it because it's just going to be a mess anyway. So I think it's, it's you know, important to, to learn and, and see uh, and know the kind of periods that you have in your brain, what's going to happen and what you can do with it. Right. You know, the one thing I've learned recently is to make like a riff folder, like like a solid, I don't know. Every time I write, I put it in this folder, even if it's crap, because like that's how I gain my inspiration. I don't know about you, but. That's um, a smart thing. I, I don't have a riff folder. Maybe I should have one, actually, because I do a lot of riffs, uh, which I forget about. Uh yeah. And I do record uh, a lot of stuff as well, but I don't keep them in, in, you know, folders like that because I, I usually I try to set out and, and finish a song <laughs> right. uh, at yeah, once. You, you, you do know. the full thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and usually it doesn't work like that. But then I just record a few riffs and, and I just forget about that session and then I do something new the, the next time. So 
it's a good idea actually to keep a folder of full of riffs like Kirk Hammett had in his phone. Hell yeah. Well, don't <laughs> lose it on your no. phone. No, that's the thing. I I have three um separate hard drives, one terabyte each, man. Yeah. That's I, it's good. like backed up three times. So. Yeah. That's smart. Um, yeah. I, I just started doing that. I've been playing guitar for like six years, seven years. Yeah. So I've lost so much shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same here. Um so what are your thoughts on being a multi instrumentalist versus only honing in to one specific thing? Um it's mainly by accident that I've learned how to play a, a, a number of instruments because I, I was never, you know, uh, determined enough to learn uh, just a single instrument and get really good at it. So what I'm doing now is just trying to cheat on, on <laughs> and trying to uh, just make things sound better than they are, basically. Uh, but I like the, the situation that I have now or the, the sort of, uh, because it, it allows me to, I'm able to create stuff uh, that I wouldn't probably be able to do if I just could play one single instrument. So it, it gives me an overview, and I think that's helpful when you are a songwriter uh, specifically because you can try different things on your own and not have to wait right. for a keyboard player to show up somewhere, you know. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I feel like just being a guitarist myself, like, like I, I write the backbone of the song, but you know, like, you got to wait for all those parts. And yeah, learning learning how to do that is one thing. Like, I could play bass, but like, I'm not specifically trained to be a bass player. No, um, you know what? What if if you only could choose like one instrument or vocals, what would it be? What do you enjoy the most? Uh, I haven't played it for many years now, but it would be drums because that's uh, where I started. And it's still the okay. instrument that impresses me the most. You know, good players, good drummers. I can watch videos forever just looking at mm -hmm. cool fills and stuff. So I would love to to be able to play the drums. But unfortunately, that career ended uh, a long time ago. So I have to, uh, you know, I'm pretty good at programming drums. And that's where I'm. Uh, you know, doing my stuff. Um, yep. But I, I do love the drums. It's uh, it's an amazing instrument. You can do so much with it, and you know. So I was um, yeah. I was just talking to Chris from Deicide the other day, and he said to me, "You're probably gonna agree with this. Um, your death metal band is only so good as your drummer. Your drummer is like the key thing to a good death metal band. Like, what's your thoughts on that? That's completely true." I mean, in death metal, drums is uh, such a, you know, important element. And if you don't have a really good drummer, then the band's going to suffer for sure. Even if you have great guitarists or a perfect death metal vocalist, it's not going to matter so right. much anyway. So that's completely true. I mean, he, he basically was saying like, so so you got a good riffer, like, you know, like a solid guitar player, but... It just brings it to the next level if they're like fucking, you know, dream theater on the drums. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And I also think oh. you should, in a band, I mean, uh, it's a good thing, at least for, for in my bands, that a band is, is sort of feeling each other, you know, uh, having played a lot together and, and having the knowing each other's musicality and all that. So that's also a, uh, a perk i would say if you if you want to have a band that sounds like a real band exactly um you know i was reading on wikipedia but i don't know like that's sometimes a good source and sometimes a really shitty source um that you kind of gave up on death metal vocals like you, you you're just doing cleans right yeah okay um do you miss doing the death metal growls or are you kind of happy with where you're at with the cleans? Well, I think right now I'm very happy where, where I am, you know, with the clean vocals, I still feel I have uh, loads of stuff to learn. I still feel very inspired. Um, I do miss doing the death metal vocals a little bit because it's, uh, I think it's a very cool element and it can bring that extra, you know, extra aggression where it's needed. But, 
uh, I sort of lost the, the, I couldn't do them anymore. Something in my throat right. said no about it. And, and I sort of lost the technique and I never really tried to get it back because I was just starting doing the clean vocals and I didn't want to screw up my throat too much, you know? So, but I do miss it a little bit. Luckily, you know, there are uh, quite a few people that can do it well. So I, I don't have to get back to doing it. <laughs> um, you know, when, how do I put this? Shit. I just went on a blank. You know, so when you talk about clean vocals in like a performing like so, say you you're at a show and you have a you had a choice between doing the two. What do you enjoy more about it? Um, I think clean vocals these days. Uh, when I started doing the clean vocals, I would probably have loved to just go back to death metal vocals because it's um, the clean vocal thing is such a broad, you know, it's a palette. You can do so many things with it, and and. Uh, as I said before, I'm still not, you know, capable of doing a lot of the stuff that you can do with clean vocals. But at least it's uh, um, it's something that keeps you busy because you, uh, at least for me, I can improve all the time. Um, right. But I think you know, in a, as you mentioned, a, a live setting, uh, I think death metal vocals goes down very well in a live setting because it's uh, it's all about the energy. Yeah. Um, so I, I wouldn't be sure, but I, I probably do the clean vocals uh, Hell yeah. th- these days. Yeah. Um. So off the topic of like death metal and stuff, um, I'm gonna give a shout out to my buddy Alex. He used to be in a band called Primal Scream Therapy, and he introduced me to Nightmares Made Flesh, and that was probably my introduction to the genre death metal. So that's why I'm so like hyped that i'm talking to you cool um you know so where do you think that album has shined or like shadowed on like the current bloodbath like discography um i think you know it's it's probably our most popular album still because it's uh it's very uh, varied and we had three songwriters doing kind of different stuff on the album so it, it has a, a wide broadcast of, of sort of different styles in death metal. You have the mm-hmm. the really fast stuff and you have some really slow stuff as well going on. And I think a lot of people can connect to that because death metal is, you know, as you know, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a genre that has a lot to offer. Uh, mm-hmm. at, at least if you're into the music, you can hear very, um, uh, different kinds of death metal, uh, and I think this album showcases a lot of, of different styles, and I think that's why people like it so much. Um, also, it had Peter Techtgren on vocals, which I think is uh, also added to the the kind of energy that the album has because he was uh, right. he, he was fresh in the band at the time. I think he wanted to prove that he was uh, uh, a good fit for us, and I think he did it very well so he was uh he was full of energy as well so it's um you know it's one of those lucky albums i guess where you you know the stars align and you hit the, all the right buttons at once yep <laughs> yeah you definitely i think the cool thing about that album is like the production it's like just right on par like it's it's raw but it's like produced at the yeah, same time exactly. it's like perfect it's like exactly where the pocket should be yeah um and like the hooks in that album holy shit man like god damn yeah Um, it's full of hooks actually it's uh it's probably our our most uh hooky record so far at least um i think after nightmares we we uh sort of wanted to walk down another path a little bit uh we did some more uh faster stuff and a bit more brutal stuff and then Lately, we've been doing uh, a little bit more of the raw, uh, even a little bit black metal influenced stuff. Um, yeah. But that's the fun thing about Bloodbath because we can do, we feel at least that we can do anything um, as, as long as it's connected to death metal because the band itself started as a tribute to this music style that we loved so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have this, uh, 
you know, we always say that, you know, what's the next album going to be? Uh, is it going to be a, a Swedish death metal album or a Florida kind of or a black metal album? We have the freedom to to choose. And I think maybe a lot of bands feel that they have to stick with their formula, which is, which is great as well. But uh, for us, it works really well with doing whatever we feel like, you know. Right. I was actually supposed to see you guys. You're playing a show in Toronto. I'm like three hours away, but I was going to trek it all yeah. the way. Um, I I don't know if that was during the COVID season or I I have no idea. It got canceled. Yeah. But ah, oh, I was so bummed, man. Yeah. Um, do you have plans coming back to the states? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had uh, uh, the tour that we were going to do, which has been canceled three times now for different reasons. And it's, uh, you know, that really sucks. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is probably when, when all of this, uh, you know, the pandemic situation, uh, when it blows over, uh, we're going to yeah. try and, and, you know, book the dates again, <laughs> because okay. uh, I mean, we played with bloodbath in North America, um, at, uh, you know, uh, Maryland Death Fest once, uh, but we never really went around and played other places. So that's uh, something we wanted to do for a long time. And we we were all looking forward to it so much, uh, all the three times. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Well, if you if you get to trek it across the border from Canada over to the United States, definitely um, hit Buffalo. Buffalo, I'm I'm telling you, because Cannibal Corpse. Yeah was like form there it's a hot spot for death metal i know yeah. you'd sell the freaking place out right away so yeah town ballroom to, yeah town, town ballroom okay, all the cool. way yeah um so i got three small questions for you here the last ones so with having like a uh you know a friendship with michael from opath you know how has that built you built like your musical background you know better um i think um he's showed me some amazing music through the years he's a very uh, open-minded guy uh and i mean he's he's such a musical nerd so he knows pretty much everything there is to know yep. about music except maybe classical music but you know all the the rock pop the the stuff from from way back in time up until now he knows about it and he listens to so much music so he always uh you know gave me tips on on stuff to listen to and uh you know he's a great uh, musician himself so we have been jamming stuff uh, over the years and i think uh, you know he's he's been very valuable for me in a musical perspective because he's uh he's always been supportive and i've been supportive to his stuff and and we have a very very nice relationship when it comes to music we always play new music to each other and, and you know right nag a little bit yeah. about <laughs> yeah you know, yeah it's it's nice to have you know somebody that's similar in taste to always be like hey man that really sounds good because like when it comes down to like writing music i don't know for me like i get burnt out really easy and just to have that little nudge yeah yeah like, it's, it's pushes important. me to yeah definitely um. So, what was your like upbringing like when you were a kid? Like, I'm talking when you were ten. Uh, when I was ten, I think I was just growing into the the whole metal thing because I, um, uh, I think I started listening to heavy metal music when I was about seven or eight, and wow, <laughs> by ten I was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was so deeply into it I was devoured by the whole thing and i was buying magazines and putting posters on my walls so i think that's where the foundation was for me uh that's where it comes from and okay you know i had a, a lot. Uh, yeah a lot Pretty, earlier than me <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm old you know <laughs> yeah so but you know my upbringing was really uh it was good and i had a lot of support from my parents with the whole musical thing I mean, they they were never uh, musicians or anything, but they loved music, and there was always music playing in our home. So when I when they saw that I had a, a, 
profound interest in this. You know, yeah. they, they went with me to the, the record stores and helped me to buy the albums that I wanted, you know, the kids. Yeah, they, they guided you. Yeah. Right yeah, on. Definitely. Damn. I mean, my, my father pushed me into like, I don't know, Motley Crue, Metallica, oh. Van Halen, but that was my introduction, but that's great. That's perfect. Actually. You know, so the last thing I got here is kind of, you know, I've probably you've been asked this question maybe, but I, I, I just want to figure it out. You know, like what draws you into just death metal in general? I don't know. I've, I've been thinking about it myself a lot because, uh, you know, what, I think I got into death metal when I was maybe about 15 or, or something. And it just clicked with me because I was into uh, metal before that, you know, as I said, the heavy metal and the thrash stuff. But when I found death metal, it was like something really clicked. Um, I guess it's the, the the whole thing with the the aggressive sound, but also the dark nature of the lyrics. And, and it was a bit uh, almost, it felt like forbidden to listen to. Mm. And it uh, it appealed to me when I was young and it still does, you know, it's, it's not something that I grown out of at all. It's still, you know, even though Catatonia is my main band, we, we don't sound anything like death metal anymore, but, right. uh, and I love the, the kind of sound that we have. And I listen to a lot of other kinds of music, but to me, death metal is the ultimate music style. It's, it has everything for me in there. It's, it's raw and in your face. Yeah. That that's about all I could freaking summarize it as. Yeah, so. and it's all you need if you're if you're a certain kind of person, I think. I mean, it's definitely not for everybody, but if you have a soft spot for, you know, like horror movies and if you're into a bit of uh, you know, dark stuff, occultism, whatever, it's uh, it's there for you and it's uh, it's great. Right on. Um, so at the end here, I usually just let you promote whatever you have coming merch with anything new. Go ahead. Um, I mean, we, we, uh, released a new Catatonia album in April and so far we haven't been able to promote it properly because, uh, properly because of the, the situation, the current situation. So I would urge people to pick that up if they have the chance, uh, uh, up until we can get on tour again, it would be nice to <laughs> to see some sales yeah. and stuff. Uh, but other than that, you know, um, as for Bloodbath, we're actually uh, writing some material right now and uh, just getting ready to to get back to, you know, maybe recording an album and, and see whatever, you know, what, what happens after this whole pandemic shit. Um, yeah, that, yeah pandemic shit that's yeah fucking right man yeah. i've had enough with it <laughs> yeah me too hey graham thank you we did it Fuck yeah, yeah we did it yeah